Hello, I'm Raquel Reinagle, a current master's degree student in the Department of Second Language Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. This video series will be covering some alternative and not so alternative approaches to language teaching. This particular video will be covering mobile assisted language learning. So let's start with an overview of this approach by our guest speaker, Dan. So today I'll be talking about um, mobile assisted language learning, uh, which is saying as, uh, said as MAL or MAL. Uh, and also I'll be talking about place-based gamification. The first thing is a lot of people might be wondering uh, what is uh, mobile gaming in the world of language learning anyway. Uh, there are several ideas about what this could be. Um, for example, maybe some of you might be familiar with Duolingual or Fluent U, which is uh, becoming a popular service for showing off videos of um, people in uh, kind of realistic conversations. But they also have uh, videos of like news websites and so on as well. And then also, um, maybe some people are kind of interested in Pokemon Go uh, recently, uh, especially after this summer's uh, surge of popularity for that um, app. So the question, of course, is uh, which of these would be uh, considered mall and, and maybe which uh, wouldn't. So let's take a look at um, some information about it, and uh, you can decide for yourselves. Maybe surprisingly, uh, Mall actually has a lot less to do with the tech aspects of it and more to do with new opportunities. If you look at the definition, it says language learning that is assisted or enhanced through the use of a handheld mobile device and often considered a subset of, of Call or Cal. And Mall games uh, have more distinctive features. So for example, uh, in opposition to, to Call or Cal, uh, they serve as an extension to create new spaces and new environments. So essentially, uh, what happens is that the students are not in a computer lab. They're not in front of a computer and, and engaging in virtual spaces in that way. They're actually out in the physical space. Another thing that, that mall games have, uh, which is distinctive, is the potential for learning is uh, much more spontaneous, uh, informal, and personalized. When you're playing a game uh, in a classroom setting, uh, typically the teacher or the researcher is going to have some idea about what they want the students to do or learn, and they might have a roadmap for how they're going to accomplish each section of the game or each section of the quest. But for MAL, even though that's true, certainly the researchers or the game designers are going to have an idea of where they want the students to go and where they want them to end up. But there is a level of spontaneity and there is a level in, in, uh, of personalization that happens in MAL because as the students are walking around, um, they could encounter a friend that they could talk to suddenly or they could look for information. Uh, for example, in a library, they could talk to a librarian. Uh, they don't have to do that, but they could. And in addition to that, uh, the learning is more personalized because the students can look up things that they're interested in. Students have more uh, agency in, in creating their own learning. And then finally, uh, the, the, another benefit or distinctive feature of MAL is that learning can be multimodal. And um, users uh, that are able to bring in prior knowledge to enhance the experience. Students can learn not only through uh, writing an essay or, or maybe talking, but they're also able to uh, send a text or look at pictures or submit a video or watch a video. Um, so that's a very different uh, and maybe more 21st century approach to how learning can take place uh, outside of the classroom. And then in addition to that, uh, in a lot of classrooms, students that might know something uh, in the class uh, don't often have a chance to kind of express the fact that they know something, right? So if the teacher asks a question or if they're playing a game, usually the teacher's trying to bring up the whole class to understand some issue or some uh, unit or some vocabulary, right? But in this case, the students are able to talk to each other, and if somebody knows something that another student doesn't, they can just say, oh, I know something about this. And that's uh, exciting for students that um, are kind of silenced in a classroom that might know more than they, they say it really at the outset. So let's go over some uh, distinct advantages of MAL. So first of all, uh, proponents cite the idea of learning anytime, anywhere is one of the most appealing aspects of MAL. Again, the portability and connectivity of the mobile devices allow for users to collect data and also submit data at their own pace. Students are not regulated to coming to a certain classroom space at a certain time, and they have to learn within a certain frame uh, in order to understand something, right? In this case, uh, with MAL, the students are able to um, go outside uh, and work on a game for, for example, maybe 15 minutes today and then maybe 15 minutes tomorrow, as opposed to coming to a classroom and learning in one hour space, right? 
Uh, and then also, if students are really enjoying themselves, uh, they don't have to stop the learning process. Uh, they could keep going. And then in addition to that, um, informal social interactivity can occur between the users of the game because, for example, different nationalities or different international students, and uh, because the common language in this case would be English, uh, the students would be able to make connections between each other uh, as they're working through the game and, and, and maybe challenging each other or agreeing with each other in negotiation. Uh, and even the idea of suffering together is a great motivator for them to kind of make a connection or make a friendship. And then, of course, uh, the last point is that uh, augmented reality allows for people to exist within two worlds at the same time, the physical space and the virtual space, as opposed to the classroom space, which tends to just be that one world. For example, uh, they could look at a building and then they could pick up the phone and they show the building uh, from in a black and white photo from 1964. And then the gameplay and essentially will take place uh, in the past. Having said that, of course, there are going to be some uh, great disadvantages as well. The most prominent would probably be the physical and technical limitations. So, for example, um, a lot of students might say, like, I, I really don't want to learn English, or I don't want to learn language on my phone, it's too small. Or if I want to submit something, the keypad might be too simple, so they can't really write something the same way that they could on a laptop or a computer. And, of course, um, the biggest issue will be the Internet. And, of course, this is all very new. Um, so there's going to be a high learning curve for both the students and the teachers. So uh, teachers themselves have to become proficient in the software and doing troubleshooting and, and getting the students ready to go out. And at the same time, students who might be used to more textbook based learning and classroom learning are probably not going to immediately see the, the language learning benefits of doing these types of games right at the outset. And then finally, um, simple activities can take much longer on mobile devices. At the beginning of this presentation, I talked a bit about the different types of language learning. So let's look at some of the different ways that uh, there are uh, mobile language learning or computer language learning. So e-flashcards are becoming very popular. That's a very basic one. Um, and I think that's uh, probably the, one of the most basic ways of, of mall learning. Uh, but it's definitely a relevant one. The next one could be listening comprehension tasks. Uh, a lot of students say that they really wish, for example, that they could uh, speak with a teacher who has a different accent. MAL allows for students to listen to uh, different varieties of English and different court recordings anywhere. Um, of course, they can do that uh, from a CD or they could do that uh, from the computer, but in the sense that they have a phone in their hand and they could uh, potentially listen to language when they're waiting for the bus or on the bus. And then to move along from that idea, of course, pronunciation practice is another uh, hot topic these days for students who uh, feel that maybe they know English and they're good at writing and, and reading and speaking into the phone to get accurate responses from certain softwares anytime, anywhere can certainly be a highly motivating uh, piece of app. And then to get into more substantial games, there are more holistic language games like Duolingo, uh, which attempt to gamify language learning using point systems and rewards. And then, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, there's also FluentU, uh, and there's other um, authentic and audio gathering services like this, which attempt to make language learning part of your daily routine. So instead of waking up and watching news about uh, the election in English, you might want to watch the news about the election in Chinese. And then finally, the thing that's becoming more prominent recently is the more elaborate augmented reality games such as Guardians of the Mo'o, which is the game that we've been working on. Okay. So at this point, I believe I'm going to stop this section of the presentation. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. So Dan covered a lot of information about MAL and place-based language learning. And to wrap up, I'll give a quick summary of the key points. Rather than using traditional classroom research, MAL in a place-based learning environment takes students out of the classroom or computer lab and into the real world. Some advantages are that students can form social interactions and that they can learn anytime, anywhere. Some disadvantages are that there is a technological learning curve and that it may take longer than a traditional class time. So that's it for this lecture. By far, this is not all the information on this approach, and if you're interested, you should do some more research. But I hope this information will start you off on the right foot to second language teaching. Good luck, and goodbye.